So Paul Heyman is now going to be one of the 2024 uh, WWE Hall of Fame inductees. But a former WWE wrestler who was managed by Paul Heyman had a lot of negative feedback to say about him. We're going to be talking about that. Also, we're going to talk about Kevin Kelly getting fired by AEW. Also, we're going to talk about Jack Perry, who just joined Hustle Torch in New Japan Pro Wrestling. What does this mean? Is this story going to bleed over uh, AEW? We're going to talk about that and much more on the Chokeslam Wrestling Report. Is the moment we've all been waiting for, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! Welcome to another episode of the Chokeslam Wrestling Report. I am your host, the infamous Ultimate One from New York City. And today we're going to be having topics about Paul Heyman. We're going to talk about Kevin Kelly. And we're going to talk about Jack Perry. So let's start off with Ryback's reaction to Paul Heyman's Hall of Fame induction. As this week, I believe was Monday Night Raw, they announced that Paul Heyman will be going in as a Hall of Famer at the, this year's Hall of Fame induction ceremony the night before WrestleMania. But there was a wrestler who hasn't been with the company probably more than 10 years already, or probably a little less, eight years. No other promotion has picked him up. But he's always had his little podcast and always taking shots at certain individuals. In the past, he took shots at CM Punk a lot. And now he's taking a shot at Paul Heyman. And I'm talking about Ryback. Now, Ryback, he, let's be honest, he has not been irrelevant in the pro wrestling industry for years. But yet he gets on the podcast like everybody else who has always something negative to say and whatnot and want to trash someone in the world of pro wrestling. Uh, that's what he does, you know. I mean, it wasn't long ago I was saw a one of his videos where someone was threatening him uh, right back, uh, threatening his life. I mean, this is how much enemy this man has gotten from fans and other uh, places. But right back went and took a shot at Paul Heyman. But before I tell you what he said about Paul Heyman, I believe Paul Heyman deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. The man is a mad scientist, a mad genius. And the only reason I always felt that WWE never gave him a higher title as a creative. I mean, they gave him the title back in the during the pandemic as a, a, I believe was one of the, in the creative. And he was pushing the young wrestlers. McMahon did not like that. And he went, ended up taking him out. And Paul Heyman ended up being Roman Reigns manager, which anything that Paul Heyman touches, it's gold. Let's be realistic. Anything this man touches, it's gold. This man used to be a journalist. Then he became a manager for the Dangerous Alliance back in the 90s. He's, um, he even uh, managed uh, uh, the Samoa SWAT team, who is family, Rikishi, family of Roman Reigns. So he's been dealing with the Samoan family for years, even Appa and Sika back in the days in WWE. You know what I'm saying? WWF, if you think about it. So Paul Heyman... Has been a genius. The man who was behind ECW, the 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 promotion that started the hardcore wrestling, they took wrestling to the next level as far as pushing the line of the stuff he did. Okay, and regardless whether he had a behind the scene with ECW, there were a lot of people that said he stole money. Uh, he was a, a you know a, a, you know a sneak DI whatever. The man has done so much in the business. This man knows the business in and out. Anybody he has managed has always become world champion. Okay. The man managed Brock Lesnar. He managed who else? Uh, CM Punk. He managed Roman Reigns. This man, anybody he touches has become a, I mean, a world champion. Now, 
I'm going to tell you what Ryback said about uh, Mr. Uh, Paul Heyman. Ro uh, Ryback concluded by saying that he believes Heyman is not as skilled on the microphone ha it as he is perceived to be and expressed his unfavorable opinion on him. He said Paul Heyman, a.k.a. Oswald Cobblepot, which my man pretty much, you know, called him out by his government name, has been inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. And I just want to say personally congratulations to this, to this piece of pie stuffing foxical pop shit stain whitey tidy wearing slot of a human being. Paul has made a career for himself being a lazy, lying, cheating, shortcut taking, just manipulate horrible human being and he's actually a great fit for the WWE Hall of Fame. Now, to me, all those words he said pretty much shows you that this man is miserable. Okay, right back has not been irrelevant. Nobody has signed him. The man has no wrestling skill at all. He tried to be the next Goldberg at one point, and he got backlash over that shit. Okay, and here he is with nothing to do but have a podcast, goes and make these comments about Paul Heyman. Whether Paul Heyman is fat or whatever you want to call it, the man is a genius. A genius. And then you go out of your way to go and talk crap about right uh, about Paul Heyman. Okay, you're just mad because no one has signed signed you. No promotions not even looking toward your way. Okay, you was never good in WWE. You was a jacked up, Chet Boyardee muscle musclehead dude. Because that's that was your your thing. Feed me more, which was the most garbage shit I ever seen in in, in wrestling. I want to be Goldberg. Okay. And here you are just trashing the man who's been a genius, the man who started a revolution back in 1994 with ECW, and he's still doing great things for the wrestling business. Okay, but you just a person who just pissed off at the world because you're not in the Hall of Fame. You will never be in the Hall of Fame, which is crazy because I, I mean, like, I don't understand. Like, why would you even trash the man and whatnot? You just, I, what are you so angry about? You know what I'm saying? He's always trashing somebody. You know what I'm saying? He actually believes his on his own mind that he's a legend in his own mind that any promotion will bring him in. They're going to make money. You did not make money for WWE. You're not going to make money for no other promotion. Even if NWA by some untold reason bring you in, you're not making money for them. TNA is not even looking at you. And TNA picks up almost everybody. AEW is not even like this. We don't know you. Okay? Which is ridiculous because this man is just... I, I just just don't get it. I just don't get the, what is the hate toward Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman deserves to be inducted in the Hall of Fame. Congratulations to the man. I am a Paul Heyman fan. Always was. Always will. Um, You know, I just feel that WWE are scared to push him to another level where as far as a head of creative, if this man, him and Triple H get together head of creative, you know how great WWE is being good as of late. Imagine him being creative. All these young wrestlers like the Austin Theory, the Ricochets, Andrade's, all these guys will be pushed instead of the same people who's been pushed for the last 10, 12 years, like the Roman Reigns, the Seth Rollins, the uh, Bobby Lashley's the, the same people because Paul Heyman always believes in young talent and he was doing it back in the epidemic 2021 and McMahon just took him out of there because he was like, uh-uh, you can't push the ricochets. You can't push the Andrade's. You can't push the Malachi Blacks. You can't push these guys. You got to push the same guys over and over again. And now it's a different administration. And if WWE is smart, they will put him in creative. Even if the, if Roman, Roman loses his belt, that's where he should be at. If you're going to put him in the Hall of Fame, he deserves every every last minute of it. Let's go now and move on and talk about this Kevin Kelly situation. Kevin Kelly got fired over the week by AEW. Now, supposedly, uh, I don't know how this started and um, the situation with Kevin Kelly, but the, Kevin Kelly went on Twitter and went on a freaking rant and whatnot. Uh, talking about Ian Riccoboni, about Ian Riccoboni, pretty much, um, you know, mischaracterizing and um, 
put it like pretty much just like just defaming Kevin Kelly's uh, uh, personality. So one of the tweets that Kevin Kelly did was when he puts in, when you go out of your way to intentionally mischaracterize my raising awareness of the global horrors or child trafficking in the French conspiracy theory that everyone knows that is bullshit in order to hurt my career and standing in the industry that at the very least is libelous. Now, apparently Ian Riccoboni says something, but uh, I don't, I mean, I try to get more information in it, but apparently Kevin Kelly went on a rant, talked bad about the company. Oh, actually not bad about it. He, he, he talked about how he wasn't used, he wasn't being used properly and that Ian Riccoboni shouldn't, you know, it's, no, it's, it's not better than him. Now, now I was thinking and I was trying to, you know, I was thinking trying to put all this together and say to myself, well, you know, collision when the collision first started and back in June of I think it was last year. Uh, I think it was June last year. Um, it was only a two man team, which was Nigel McGinnis and Kevin Kelly. And it was perfect. And for some untold reason, AEW decided to put a third person in there. And the third person was Ian Riccoboni. And my question was, why is Ian Riccoboni in this three man show? Okay. Rick Abani, and I, to be honest, Ian Rick Abani, he's good over there in Ring of Honor. I never liked the real Ian Rick Abani as a commentator. He's it sounds like a goofball. He doesn't, you know, he, he's always talking about his wife and a little Twitter, Twitter and this, Twitter that. Oh, this one from Twitter said, who cares? You instead of concentrating on the match, you're not doing that. Meanwhile, Kevin Kelly who won announcer of the year or commentator of the year, I think the last two years with New Japan Pro Wrestling, pretty much talks about the history of the wrestling match and what what has caused this wrestling match to happen, the history of the wrestlers, where they've been, what they have accomplished. This is Kevin Kelly we're talking about. Okay? One of the men that has built a reputation as one of the best commentators in the business. Now, with this nonsense that happened, and I'm sure Ian Riccoboni probably started all this, and which probably pushed the buttons of Kevin Kelly. And to me, honestly, I feel like Kevin Kelly should have never, uh, honestly, uh, went and did that rant on, you know, on Twitter because it's been known that uh, there was word last year that if he was caught um, bitching and moaning on Twitter, that you was going to get disciplined by AEW. And it showed that Tony Khan is not playing games. He's not playing games. As you guys saw, uh, Sammy Guevara got suspended this this week also because of the situation with Jeff Hardy when he landed on Jeff Hardy's face, broke Jeff Hardy's nose. Uh, they wanted Sammy to do an audible and do something different. He instead did the GTH, and which hit uh, Jeff Hardy in the head. Um, and he getting suspended. And then most likely, I won't be surprised to let him go, Sammy Guevara. Even though he's been a day one type of guy, but but you could tell that Tony Khan is not playing anymore. He's not playing with any of these wrestlers. He's probably tired of the bull crap that every time he turns around, something good happens. Like this past weekend, uh, last Sunday, we had Revolution, Sting's last match, and it was one of the best pay per views that they had had in a long time. And here we go, and we had this Kevin Kelly situation tarnishing the weak and whatnot and he i think tony Khan is fed up and him firing kelly clearly i mean kevin kelly it was very very surprising you know they had took him out the AEW roster and then the next day they announced he got fired you know um so kevin kelly i don't know everybody's talking about maybe he should go to wwe wwe could use him and whatnot and you know he is very good what he does um and if he lands in WWE, that's an AEW loss. You want to stick with Ian Riccoboni, which to me, honestly, Riccoboni is a clown. Uh, I never liked the Ian Riccoboni, and I never will. So, um, I don't know. But the three-man team, I mean, I like they got Excalibur, Tony Schiavone, and Taz on Dynamite. But now now you got Nigel McGuinness with um, with yeah, Tony Schiavone, but they always bring a third person in there to do the announcing because, I mean... Now they show the third, but they should get Moro Nalo. That's it. Let's get Moro Nalo in the uh, in collision, and you have a great time. I mean, it'll be great. I mean, but 
it's always a freaking problem. It's always a problem. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and they always, and again, everybody's always looking for something to bitch about AEW. You know what I'm saying? These stories pop out just when every AEW does something good. These stories pop out just to fucking tarnish AEW. That's the way I'm looking at it. Anybody else can say anything else, but in the reality, it is what it is. Like this weekend, Dynamite, they were hitting home home runs out of the park. People were still trying to find a fucking um, reason to criticize the show. Did this have 179,000, whatever it was, Okada came out and whatnot and joined the elite. But hey, everybody's worrying about the damn ratings. Who gives a fuck about the ratings? Okay. It is well known that AEW is still trying to get the, uh, wrestling fans to come and look at the product. And they're not going to be uh, trying to compete with WWE because WWE is, is a global stuff. And WWE right now is just like on some other level right now. You know, thanks that they took out McMahon. So let's talk about Jack Perry, who is participating in the New Japan Cup. And he ended up beating Shota Umino. Now, you remember that... And uh, Battle of the Valley in January after Shota Umino won his match, Jack Perry attacked Shota Umino because he had a mask on him in the crowd. He decided to attack him and then he broke an AEW contract and then, then he disappeared for a couple of months and he appeared in um, in New Japan and he wrestled at the New Japan Cup it ending up beating Shota Umino and then joining the House of Torture the subdivision of Bullet Club. So that was very interesting. And when I, it goes to show that Hiroshi Tanahashi right now is bringing all these American wrestlers in New Japan. He's trying to mix it up. I mean, the president who was there before could tell, you could tell that it was, there weren't a lot of Americanized wrestlers and there were very few gaging wrestlers. And in case you don't know what gaging wrestlers is, is wrestlers who are not Japanese. Uh, and now you got a mixture. You got uh, Nick Nemeth, uh, also known as Zach, um, I forgot, I forgot that Ziggler, whatever, whatever his name is, Ziggler. Now he's known as his real name, Nick Nemeth. He's the global world champion. Now he's defending that belt. He claims he's gonna defend it everywhere. You got uh, the king of bros, uh, Matt Riddle, who just won the, uh, the new Japan television title and whatnot. And you, you, you still have, um, you know, um, what's his name? Oh, god, he just beat, um, I can't get him in my head. He just beat Brian Daniels and Zach Sabre Jr. And, uh, you know, you got these guys who right now, Zach Sabre Jr. is gunning for the IWGP belt. And don't be surprised if Zach Sabre Jr. ends up winning the New Japan Cup because it's just started. So it's going to be very interesting. But Jack Perry joining the House of Torture is very, very uh, surprising because I didn't even expect that. But the House of Torture, they are that group. In case you guys don't follow New Japan, that group has been out of pocket. Um, I just saw, I was watching the uh, February 24th show, uh, New Beginning in Sapporo, and I just saw that, uh, I think it was night one or night two, where Desperado lost his IWGP Junior title to uh, to Yo. I said Yo or Show. I think it was Show. Show. And by count up. I haven't seen that shit in New Japan Pro Wrestling in a long time. If you get counted out in Japan, you lose the belt because uh, Ren, Numer uh, Ren Narita went and interfered, went under the ring, came out under the ring, and choked out Desperado while he got counted out by, by 20 count. That I haven't seen in a long time, so they got their hands on the IWGP uh, Junior World title, and now they also got the Never Open Way title, the Never, Never Open Way, whatever it is called, uh, evil has that belt and that belt is spread painting with black paint all over it. So it's just, it's just crazy. It's getting interesting. It's funny because I said to my, well, Okada is gone. Tamatanga is gone. Uh, you know, well, Osprey is gone. And you know, I say, oh, well, they're not going to have this and this and that. Well, that is not true because I just saw these last two shows and they were good. So this new crop of wrestlers, young wrestlers are now going to be the ones that are going to be carrying New Japan Pro Wrestling, but again, Jack Perry joining House of Torture was a very, very um, surprising to see. So uh, we'll see what happens um, coming up in the next couple of weeks, where especially who wins the New Japan Cup, and we're going to be talking about it. 
that is it for me today, guys. Um, it's very short. Um, I want to thank those who keep uh, subscribing to the channel. Please hit that subscribe button. Hit the uh, notification bell for new uploads. Hit that thumbs up. That will help me greatly. Also, check out my uh, social media outlets. If you guys want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Oh, X, whatever you want to call it. I'm also on TikTok, the Chokeslam Wrestling. You can find the little clips I have there. And when I also check out my 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 podcast store, which is tcwr.veryimpressive.com. That's tcwr.veryimpressive.com. Uh, um, so check it out. This is right down on the scroll, tcwrveryimpressive.com. So check your hats, your sweaters, um, T-shirts. They're all there. And support the podcast. I will appreciate it. So that is it for me today, guys. I will see you guys next week. Me more pro wrestling uh, news and my feedback on it. And we'll see you next week. 